Well, to Peter's friends and family, uh, thank you very much for being here this morning. I'd like to acknowledge the distinguished guests that are with us as well, um, members of the Bathurst City Council uh, in particular who've put today's memorial together, but especially uh, a big welcome to Peter's fans and motorsport supporters generally. Uh, some of you I know have, have taken the day off and perhaps even travelled great distances to be here. It's, it's wonderful to see some car club representation. I don't know many of you are excited about the cruise on Sunday as well, so thank you for coming. Uh, like many of you, I can vividly recall where I was uh, the day that news came through of his passing. It's staggering to think that it was 10 years ago today. They say that no man, no person, no competitor or player is ever bigger than the sport. Peter Brock was perhaps an exception, although he certainly wouldn't have thought of himself uh, in that manner. It is very fitting that we are here today at the National Motor Racing Museum at the base of Mount Panorama for this morning's service, one of the greatest racetracks in the world, made that much more special by the things that Peter achieved here. The record books show so much more in the way of career successes, but Bathurst was something else. There was a real connection between Peter and this place. Shortly we'll hear from Peter's brother Phil, our supercars and well-known motor racing chaplain, the Reverend Gary Coleman, will also say a few words, along with the Bathurst, uh, the Bathurst rather, Deputy Mayor in Ian North. Can I ask all of you just please, for the next half an hour or so, just to switch your phones off or to switch them to silent, please. I want to begin proceedings today, uh, if we can, with a traditional welcome to country. We'd like to acknowledge the Wiradjuri people, the traditional owners of this land. The Wiradjuri are the Goanna Totem, the people of the Three Rivers, the Macquarie, traditionally known as the Womble, Lachlan or Kalari, and the Murrumbidgee, which has retained its original name. Peter, as I said in the introduction, was synonymous with this place. He had a huge impact on Bathurst. And to talk a bit more about that, would you please welcome the Deputy Mayor, Mr Ian North. Make him welcome. Thank you, Greg Rust. Firstly, thank you all for coming, family, friends and fans. I was fortunate enough to um, have met Peter a few times and I think everyone here would have stories of Peter. But look, I first too would like to acknowledge traditional owners of the land, or Wiradjuri people, pay my respect to elders past and present, and to acknowledge any Aboriginal people in, in the audience today. And also a uh, big apology, our Mayor, anyone from Bathurst know he's one, probably one of the hardest working mayors in Australia. His uh, body shut down a bit at the moment, he's got a bit of that man flu, so he's an apology today and so I was fortunate enough to step up here. Peter. Um, Peter Brock, Peter Perfect, the king of the mount. Um, there's so much you can say, but the man himself did so much for so many. By the way he steered a car around this mount especially, by the way he spent the time with the kids, that he wouldn't leave. You could see his pit crew and managers pulling him back. Come on Peter, we've got to get in the car. But that was the man. He was a very, very special man that meant a lot. And we at Bathurst here know he's helped promote our motor racing museum. He's promoted our track around Australia and around the world. He called Bathurst his second home. And we're very proud of that and very proud of the association the Brock family has had with Bathurst. The V8 fans, the supercars, names like Brock, Johnson, Moffat, that era has probably led us where we are today. We've got to remember the past to know where we've got in the future. They were very much the pioneers of car racing to my way of thinking. And I think it has led us to a great uh, sport that we have today and, and the V8 supercars, Virgin supercars should be very proud of the job they do. As I said, the Brock family, synonymous with Bathurst. And it's great to see that this tall gentleman here behind that I met a number of months ago, how passionate he is about Bathurst and still behind the car. And um, it's good to see that, that passion, the Brock and that Bathurst. And that's what it's all about. And today, to acknowledge, it's hard to think 10 years ago, when I heard on the radio we were talk, people were talking this morning, where were you 10 years ago? I hadn't really thought about this morning, but yeah, like most people, I was working a job and someone came in and they knew I was a massive Rocky fan, did you hear the news? And I was stunned. I don't know what I said for the next 10 minutes. And I think, like a lot of people, we, um, we probably stopped and listened to the reports. But so great 10 years on that everyone loves that man, that gentleman, that race car driver that meant so much to us. And I think we'll meet a lot to motorsport fans going forward. 
So thank you all very much for coming today. I've got to pay special mention to our event staff. What they do behind the scenes, popping and, and fixing things that uh, occur, these things happen because of our event staff. And to those, thank you very much. And to the councillors out there, Council Alderman and Council Morse for turning up, thank you very, very much. Uh, but look, today, it's a sad day, but let's celebrate the man, the gentleman, the person that meant so much to motor racing fans, whether you're Holden, Ford, Volvo or what. He was a man that was well respected, so thank you all for turning up today. Ian, thank you. Um, it's not hard to see uh, where Ian's passion comes from. Those leather jackets sold out in a heartbeat in 2002, and I think you're one of the very lucky few to, uh, to get one that looks brand new. So thank you for those insights. Uh, on Peter and, uh, and what he means to Bathurst. Could I now call, please, to the lectern, the Reverend Gary Coleman. Please make him welcome. Thank you, Greg, and uh, Councillor North as well. It's a privilege to be able to speak here today, as it was on the grid in 2006, and the almost sacredness of this mountain reeks with memories of many exploits of which Peter was the standout star. Why Peter Brock will never be forgotten. My first meeting with Peter was my first year as chaplain when he asked me to pray for him. He asked me to lay my hand on his right rear tie. He didn't have enough grip. <laughs> I never did, but he still won anyway. The uniqueness of his giftedness and his talented skills made him stand out in racing history. And how many of our current drivers and teams are locked into our sport because they watched Alan and Dick and Peter and others run the mountain. Peter became a hero from a farmyard Austin 7 to a mountain V8 glory. Followers gained a hero, a model to follow, and shaped many other people's identities. He made such an impact on people that when he was gone and it ended, people asked, what do we do now? Who do we follow? And who am I? Brock left such a hole in so many people's lives, that's the reason why he will never be forgotten. And the impact of a loss heightens the impact of the life that was lived. I have both admiring and solemn observations to make the five groups of people who will never forget Peter. And in each case, this date and memorial and the upcoming Bathurst 1000 re-triggers the grief and loss and the recurring shock of the invincible Peter Perfect losing his life in an uncharacteristic Brock manner. And the how and why could this happen questions still linger. First group to mention are the family and close friends. Phil and Lewis, and Bev, and James, Robert, Alexander, Julie, Mick and others. Such a loss creates an, an emotional dynamic that strains and barely comforts. And there were four of our chaplains involved with the family and the team over that day and following and I'll never forget getting a call from one of my two chaplains in Perth who rang me who was with a stunned notice of what had happened and of course my first reaction was you're joking what and he said i can't believe it either and these folks will always be followed by the haunting thoughts that they never got to say what they would have wanted to say to peter the second group are his colleagues and competitors and officials the adrenaline shaped competitor uh, competitiveness with peter formed a part of their lives and experiences both sealed relationships in private intensity and in the public stories, those intense battles they had. And we who have never raced at high speed like this can never understand the combination of angst and respect which formed with these men in their high speed machines. Another group that will never forget were the car owner and the car and team preparers and the hurt inflicted by spontaneous accusations at that time may still run deep. Theirs is a quiet, private and unfair memory. The fourth group, the nationwide fans of Peter Brock. In 2006, on the grid here, my tribute was not so much to Peter but to a hurting audience. For we had lost two national heroes within a couple of days, Steve Irwin and Peter Brock. And the whole nation was feeling the loss of that. When two heroes have gone, who do we follow and, and the impact they've had upon us? And to find that, it left the nation with a bewildering time. 
Then to find that Peter had gone in such a manner as a car race in a tree, and to find him to have had feet of clay in an accident and personal challenges put him more on the level with us, and that often means the reassessing of that link in talent and normal life. When heroes are taken, even the non-interested become interested while the story runs. And posters still line bedroom ceilings and man cave walls with an echo that says, I was there, I saw that. And there seems to be, when these kinds of things happen, a national mourning that's becoming a culture and custom to us right across Australia and parts of the world. The last group are the hero worshippers. As the song says, everybody needs a hero. And those who attach part of their identity to their hero, when the hero is no longer there, there is a question as to who am I, who do I follow, what do I do now? And when speaking to some of the very passionate Brock fans, that kind of thing said, where do I find my identity now? I want to speak a little towards that. People who gain or milk their identity from their heroes then have a sense of boldness and confidence that can be re-triggered with events like today. And for those who don't have an assurance of their eternal future, that can often be quite stark. But when as individuals we discover and affirm our identity from our Creator, apart from our work or achievements or positions or fame or heroes, then our view of losing someone is not as intense or stark and takes on a less traumatic dimension. And we find our own personal worth is in who we are, not so much what we do or whom we idolise. This is in no way to put down anyone with that idolisation and still is, because we still need our heroes. But I want to speak to one other factor to people in the levels of sport that we know here, and that is a further factor when somebody steps down from a full-time drive or from that place, and when Peter moved from the king of the mountain to where moving to a different place within our sport and in his personal life. It often experiences a downer experience as to who am I now. Every top athlete, every business magnate, Every captain of industry, movie and TV and rock stars go through the same despairing cycle of self-worth and self-esteem evaluation. Our good friend John Bauer went through this some years back and publicly spoke about it in order to warn men and others from the same level that they needed to seek help to cope with that. And from our chaplaincy position behind the scenes in every level of professional sport, when somebody steps off the field, away from their position, they all go through this realigning as to who I am now. Even this past month, news that Michael Phelps, the US swimming phenomenon, went the full dive down into drink and drugs and almost to the end. He was rescued by an NFL friend named Ray Lewis, who said to him, mate, don't shut down because if you shut down, we all lose. And handed him a book entitled, A Purpose Driven Life. And Michael Phelps discovered in himself who he was in relation to his maker, his creator of God, and Christ as his savior, and rebuilt his life, went back into swimming, and the last few months are history as to what that built in a renewed focus in his own personal life. And every one of us must deal with those same identity crises. Every car is first related to its maker and its name. And that should be the same for us in our own personal lives. Yet in spite of all this, of the five levels in these somber thoughts, there is still a sense of great thankfulness to have been a part of an era of such an individual skill and talent, and daring, and friendships, the likes of which we may never see again. Like winning Bathurst by six laps. Never again. Yep. Maybe six one hundredths of a second, as we do today. Peter will never be forgotten, at least by all of us. <laughs>